Yes, good morning and thank you, Ian, for doing the admin and also for your wonderful write-ups afterwards and John yeah. for hosting, which is always good. Um, my name's Christine Chittett and I'm the chair of Exmouth and District U3A and we've almost got 1,000 members now, so a very, very large U3A and we've recently had our 2,000th member since we formed in 2012. Now, Margaret McIntosh this morning, she's one of our long-standing members because she joined us in November 2012. A very enthusiastic member. She's a regular attender at these sessions and she's given a number of presentations, um, both at these sessions and at our wonderful U3A geology group. And the U3A geology group was set up quite early after we formed as a U3A, and we go out on uh, trips as well, mostly in the summer, and in the winter we have meetings in a local hall uh, where people like Margaret give presentations. Margaret has got many interests though because she's also has been and is mem a member of Art Appreciation 2, Birds 2, Discussion Group, Family History, is very, very much into her family history, local history, as well as geology. And Margaret helped us out at our wonderful open day where we had so many visitors there um, and gained 60 new members. And I'd like to extend a warm welcome this morning to some of you who are new to these sessions. Um, it's good to see you. But thank you, Margaret, for giving up your time this morning for an unusual title, um, which will reveal itself, I think, when you give us the outline of what you're going to say. But thank you very much, Margaret. So if we give Margaret a warm welcome in the customary fashion. Thank you, Margaret. Well, this is very much a shortened version of a presentation I gave to the geology group some time ago. Um, I hope it's sufficiently shortened so it doesn't bore you. Um, now, recently, John asked for positives for from the coffee and chat group. And someone said that they found biographical information about members of the group interesting. So I hope I don't have to apologize for starting with some biographical information. Um, on a personal level, I got a place at Exeter many, many, many moons ago to read physics. When I told the physics teacher that I'd got this place, her reply was really encouraging. It's, she said, oh, I always thought you'd work with your hands, not your head, which was, which was great. Um, my main subjects were physics with additional maths and geology subsidiary, but after the first year, I did a complete swap round and I changed to geology with maths as my second subject and physics as my third. Um, that led to some research in structural geology based in Cornwall, looking at folded rocks, uh, particularly, specifically between Hale and Portreath on the North Cornish coast. Now, Prof had some wonderful idea that because I'd done maths as my second subject, I was going to be sort of looking at these folded rocks and the deformation and going into stresses and strain ellipsoids and tectonic domains and things like that. But um, that didn't appeal to me, never mind. And it was about 25 years later that a colleague pointed out to me that my interest in structural geology was aesthetic rather than scientific. And he was absolutely right. But it <laughs> took someone else to point that out to me. So what do you see here? Just have a little look at that and just we'll try to register what your actually what your reaction to that photograph is. But we'll come back to that right at the end. That's Millock in Cornwall. Now some of the quotes that I find interesting in relation to what I'm going to be saying is one from Berger in his book, Ways of Seeing. Um, I won't read them out to you because you can read them yourself. Um, and we'll come back to those later, and particularly the last one. Okay. Um, rocks. 
looking at some rocks, rocks as archaeology has a Kalanish, beauty, very aesthetic. Um, some st modern standing stones that I photographed waiting for the train from Maleg, uh, the, the um, boat for the ferry from Maleg to the Outer Hebrides. Um, I, I find it absolutely fascinating when people have taken the time to actually create things like that, rather than just take a photo of the Isle of Rum. This one interests me particularly. I find this very said, said this is a Scarab Bray, where the, I don't know if anyone's been to the um, archaeological site there, but someone has walked along the beach a little way and taken the trouble to sort of replicate one of the structures from within the Scarabray remains. I find I find that really interesting and, and fascinating. So this is ar the archaeology and history with rocks. And then pure art with rocks, and we recognize these. These are three of Peter Randall Page's sculptures. Peter Randall Page is a sculptor whose workshop is just north of Drew's Tainton. Um, three enormous rocks as art, specifically as art, and I find them very aesthetic. But then art involves color, art involves form, sculpture. And when I look at these rocks, my brain doesn't work as a, a scientifically trained geologist. It, the art switch, the aesthetic switch comes on and I just see the colors in the rocks on the left and the, the forms in the rocks on the right. Uh, uh, Cornwall and uh, Ladrum Bay, I think. But, uh, no, on the way to Babacom, isn't it? I find those absolutely beautiful. I have no scientific interest in them whatsoever. This one's a bit more of a challenge. Um, I wonder how quickly you notice the people in that. It took me a long while to notice there were people in that. When I that was on the boat trip to to Brixham. Um, color, shape, form. I find that I find it beautiful. Quite apart from the the scientific geology of it. Um, rocks, sculptures or paintings. Uh, four shots from Budley Salterton. And I've inserted, since I sent the slides to John, two little paintings that reflecting perhaps the rocks, and those are two Rothko paintings. Uh, the right, right colours, horizontal structures, but I find the rocks more beautiful with their textures and forms. natural staining or painting. One on the, these are both on, on the boat trip from Exmouth to Brixham. Um, top left hand one, the local red rocks. I've no idea what forms that blue staining, but I, I, find, it I find it beautiful. The, the other one, the, the left hand one is, I think it's absolutely stunning. Let's look, look close up of that. I could, I could, maybe I'm odd, but I could have that on my wall. It's just absolutely natural leaching of minerals out of the rocks and running down the cliff face. And the colors I think are just beautiful. They're the colors that um, early people used in their rock paintings, aren't they? And, in the, and the, they are still used on some of the, well, I've seen them being used in Botswana to decorate some of the, the huts. So is my interest in geology scientific, igneous, metamorphic, sedimentary, paleontological, structural, or is it artistic, aesthetic? When you think of rocks and artistic or aesthetics of rock, perhaps you frequently think of landscape, rocks in landscape. And this coincidence, there's a photograph that I took on a Shetland beach, and I had a virtually identical photograph sent to me by a friend who visited that beach about four years later. So it obviously has appeal artistically, aesthetically, perhaps geologically. But I'm not really looking at landscape in particular. We, I think we know that landscape is beautiful or can be beautiful. But from that same beach, that boulder on the left, I, okay, I could explain the geology of it, but I'm not interested. I think it's absolutely a stunningly beautiful boulder 
very reminiscent perhaps of the Peter Randall Page sculptures that I've inserted on the right hand side, similar shapes, in equal interest and a really beautiful boulder. And there are some others behind with, with similar sort of patterns in them. Technically they're nice, G-N-E-I-S-S, and the pink bits are felspars, as in the dark more granite where the felspars are white, but these are pink. I'm looking sort of closer at, at the, the landscape. I'm looking at color and form particularly. Um, this is from, from the Outer Hebrides, really vivid red. But I find that stunningly beautiful, much more interesting again than the, the geology that produced it. Now this is links very much with research I did and my interest in geology as aesthetic or as art. Four examples of folded rocks. Um, the bottom left hand one is from Cornwall. The other, I think the bottom right hand one is from, also from Cornwall. The top two are certainly from Isle of Lewis. But the folding, I don't know if I can, oh, I can't make my oh, cursor, yeah. The folding coming down and up and round. And then this one, a fold. This one's a bit more in three dimensions. The others are very much in two dimensions. And folds here up and down. Tracing the fold round. And then this one, fold. And you can tell what a lousy scientist I am because this is the only photograph that's actually got a scale in, unless there are people. More, these are from the Isle of Col, I think. Yes, they are. Interesting inclusion, big boulder trapped in the rocks, the enlargement of it here. You can see the, the little micas glinting in the sun. And then another boulder with folding in. Chase it down, and this is an enlargement of it. So there's obviously a very interesting geological history that's produced these structures, but as I've said repeated several times, I like the aesthetics of them. Slightly larger scale, linking my interest in the aesthetics with my training as a structural geologist. Uh, folding coming, rock coming down here. In, in this one, folding coming across very sort of diagonal sort of zigzaggy sorts of folding across here, producing nice colors, the, the white of the quartz crossing it over. Folding here, down here, up. Adds interest to that clip. And then this one is local on the way to Brixham again. Comes across there, folds, comes back. So here, comes back, and round there, and back, and then back round again. So that's highly folded. I Again, I, I have to repeat it again. I find it, the aesthetics of it beautiful. Structurally, I mean, the history is actually interesting in that those sediment, they're sedimentary rocks. They would have been deposited horizontally. Then they've been folded into what are known as isoclines, so, so absolutely flattened backwards and forwards. From those folds have been folded again into zigzag folds. So there's a long geological history that's produced a quite beautiful structure. Looking at closer and looking at the color of rock, I mean, art, art very much involved with color, pinky. Pinky folded rocks. Just folded. This one's on the on the beach in my research area. They really do look that blue. That's not been color enhanced at all. That is the color of the rocks. And I, I could go into the, the the 
and what's produced these structures. But I just, I hope you find them beautiful like I do. There's the, the basic blue, there's thin lines coming through of undisturbed sediments. Then there's a, a band that's got sort of bulges on it. Then there's more over here. And I think the patterns are just stunning. You're probably thinking she's mad. This one, again, Cornwall, gray rocks with some lighter rocks that have been fragmented and folded and swirled to produce stunning patterns. And, and again, even more complex. This one I used in the talk that I gave to the geology group to introduce the tea break, because it's like the profile of a person. And it said tea time now on it. So we've got pinky, pinky, orangey colors, blue, darker gray, lighter gray. Two more, so to a beach level again. Horizontal lines and sediments, structures, swirly structures, producing patterns, gray rocks with, fra with parallel fractures across them. And this one's even more complex and I think more beautiful. Lots of fractures, vertical ones, horizontal ones, lots of colors or so ochres, purpley colors, blues, making to my mind works of art and aesthetically beautiful. Uh, back to my research, in my day, so long ago, we had to make our own thin sections of rocks. Now it's all done by machine and students don't have to do it themselves. We had to make our own thin sections. And there I've used some thin sections that I've made as negatives on to sort of print them as photographs. And it shows the internal structure of some of the rocks. Um, again, beautiful works of art. This one is, um, I find a very interesting, well, I, I have it as a, just a, a decoration, an ornament. It's a block of rock, which, I, which is from Mam Tor in Derbyshire. And as you can see straight away, there's the pattern on it. Perfectly naturally made pattern. Circling around, reminiscent of this little inset of, um, Peter Randall Page sculpture again with the, the swirls and curves. It's a format he uses quite frequently. But this one, this, this one is made, these, these tracks are actually made by a gastropod. If you imagine um, a muddy bed, some mud, mud underwater and a gastropod, perhaps in the, an estuary, and a snail, gastropod snail, crawls across feeding and its weight makes slight indentations in the mud. And then perhaps the mud dries out, and perhaps it's a tidal, I don't know. And then some sand washes across and fills the indentations that the snails made. And that gets, that sand gets preserved, lithified. And so the indentations are made permanent but this bit of rock is upside down. So it actually, from a geological point of view, it actually indicates the way up of the rocks in the cliff face at Mam Tor. This rock is, was, I've got it upside down now, but it indicates which was the, the base of the geological structure, the geological strata. But I, I find that just a, a, a beautiful work of art, not as good as Peter Randall Page's, of course, but I, but it's purely a natural and I think aesthetic. Um, these these photographs are taken from plane flying over the Sahara, so they're taken through rather grubby windows, so they're a bit blurry, but they show on a rather different scale the um, the aesthetics, what I call aesthetic geology. There's a road and a river and some beautiful erosion patterns. And I have several of these. Um, this is flying to Gambia and so we go along the sort of western side of the Sahara. Some more patterns. 
different colors. This is curve round here, which suggests folding, but it's just an, an, a nice pattern again. Some strong erosional channels. This, this one, quite, I don't know the elevation of these, but they must be quite high, but. And, and then uh, just for erosion patterns from the Sahara. And this is in the same sort of area. Now, as a, a structural geologist, these should really appeal to me because this structure is made by folding of the rocks. There's that, that bit. If you imagine um, a bridge roll, <laughs> <laughs> the, the sides, or, or just a, a crusty cob would do, the sides all slope away from the, the crown of the, the roll. And if you then cut a, a, a section across it, you'd have the, the crust would make a circular pattern. Well, that's what's happening here, but it's, it's a dome. The rock's been folded into a dome. And then, it, it, so all these rocks dip or incline outwards from the center. And then they, the, the inside of the, the dome is being shown here, similarly here, and more up here. Now, they've, they've said they're folded rocks in the Sahara, so I should be really interested in the geology of them, but um, I'm not. <laughs> I just I think they make a fantastic pattern. There is, again, the, the aesthetics of them interest me more than the scientific explanation. Uh, that, that, those last ones were folding of the rocks, so they were tectonic forces folding the rocks. These are patterns just made by water, by drainage, river patterns, um, rather like the veins of a leaf. They're absolutely, absolutely stunning. The river might be dry now, but at some time, clearly, and at some stage, maybe in the year, occasionally, they have some flash flooding, which accentuate the, the channels. The light bits are all channels where the water drains away, creating beautiful patterns. And that one, um, I think that just makes a fantastic painting. Forget the geology, just look at it as a fantastic work of art. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, there is a road coming down, there's cliffs, there's channels, there's all sorts in it, but I think it just makes an absolutely beautiful painting. Mm. Back, back to Peter Randall Page. Um, he's interesting rocks. He's got the, the patterns, very similar to some of the patterns I showed. Think, think back to that, those blue rocks, very similar patterns. Think back to some of the earlier ones I showed with complicated folding and movement in, of movement in the rocks. But he's made them into artistic shapes. Back to the geology. Here, these, this is bued. I'm sure some of the geologists amongst you will recognize that as bued. Beautiful folding. And this is back to Milok. Obviously, I could explain the geology, but I'm not going to, you'll be pleased to know. But back to the quotations, think back now, the relation between what we see and what we know is never settled. Now, I don't know what you thought when you first, when you saw the first picture I used, whether you just saw it as a bit of coast, a, a cliff, or whether some of you noticed the folding in it, but having hope, those that didn't notice the folding, perhaps having been so sort of sensitized through the other slides to the folding and rocks, perhaps you now see more in this than you saw originally. Um, what, you, what we see, what you see now, what we know is never settled. So the more you get to know, the more you will see in it. Um, this one's quite interesting that um, child does recognize things before they have the words to describe it. But this was this one was interesting in relation to a student called Sarah that I had. Um, I took this, her particular year group of students to Milok on a field trip, her Dover minibus down the one in three slope, which was a bit terrifying, even more terrifying coming up 
the one in three slope to get out and we'll look in the end. And as we were going down the slope, Sarah said, um, I've been to Millwork. We came here on an A-level biology field trip. So I said to her, what did you think of the folding in the cliff? And she said, what folding? And when we got down onto the beach and she turned around and looked at this cliff, she just could not believe that she hadn't noticed that the, the, the rocks were folded, zigzag folding. And I was intrigued by this, how someone, she would have been sort of 17, 17 or 18, could go to the, and not notice in the cliff this, in the, this, this very marked lines, even if she didn't have the word folding to attach to them. So I asked some colleagues afterwards about this, and one of them point, used, or uh, well, paraphrased a quote from John Dewey, perception stops at the point of recognition. And she will have just looked at that, recognized it as cliff, and her perception would have stopped there, which I find fascinating. I just wonder how much people do see into it. How, now, back to the question here, do you see more into it now, having seen those other photographs of folds, than you saw originally? Um, relation between what you see in that photograph and what you know, perhaps you know a little bit more of geology now, maybe have changed your perception. So do you still perceive this in the same way? Absolutely stunning folding. It used to be on the, the cover of um, one of the Ordnance Survey maps, but it's not, not on it any longer. That's one of my little efforts. <laughs> so I do, <laughs> do indulge in the art as, as well as in the geology. They're, they're all fairly local. So back to my original question, is geology, science, art, or both? I would, obviously, that's clearly, obviously both. It's very much a science, and it's very, I think, very, very aesthetic, artistic. And that's all really, very, very brief. Um, the little anecdote associated with this picture, that's Malague, you know, at Malague, um, is perception. Is it a Christmas tree or is it Father Christmas? I use it as a Christmas card um, one year. It could be Father Christmas with his thumb up. And the original photo I was going to use was standing further back than that, showing a few more of these beautiful sculptures that people have taken the trouble to make. And then when I looked at the photo I was going to use, there in the background, standing by one of the rocks, was my grandson having a pee. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I noticed it before I sent the car. <laughs> so that's it, really. It's very, very brief. I've raced through. I didn't think I was going to go through as quickly as that, but I'm sorry about that. But if anyone does want to ask any questions about any of the, the slides or any of the any of my comments, do please do so. That, that was absolutely marvellous, Margaret. Thank you. That was terrific because uh, it raises all sorts of questions about uh, perception, how we perceive, how we interpret particular mm. images. Uh, and I, I just love this uh, this, this link with, uh, well, Peter Randall Page in, in, in particular. I, I, I don't know his, his work, but I'd be interested to know, I mean, he's clearly influenced by geology and what he's seen, but I'm, I, 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 in the creative process, I'm interested to see whether he creates it and it happens to look like something that exists in nature, or whether he's actually been directly influenced and then interprets nature in a particular way. Very good question. I don't don't know. There's a very good trail. There's a very good trail in the Drunes Tayton area of his work. Right. It's worth doing, and occasionally he does. I've been to a few of his talks, which have been very interesting. And there's one of his works on the Exeter University Sculpture Trail. Oh right, that's interesting. And there's also one outside St Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh, which has been in the news recently with the Queen. And amazingly, I couldn't find any acknowledgement of who the sculptor was. I've got. I knew it was his because I've got a list of his works that um, I was I was sent. Um, and but there was absolutely no board, no notice anywhere to say who the sculptor was, which is very puzzling. That that's remarkable, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. 
Right, well, um, does anyone want to see any of these images again before we come away from the sharing the screens? Because I, it, 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 it was wonderful. My only sadness is I didn't have enough time to really absorb it. Um, but you could spend hours just looking at one of your slides, actually. Well, you've got, you've got a copy of them. I, I'm, I'm privileged. <laughs> I'm privileged. And of course, when you see the recording, everyone, you can always pause the recording and stop and linger as long as you like, which is, is the beauty. But you've shown us such a range, um, and, and, and I loved it. Um, and one, can I just interrupt? one of the things I hope it will mean is when people see rocks in future, they just interrogate them a little bit more, see, see rocks differently themselves, and look, look for more than just the initial colour or the landscape beauty of it, but actually sort of look, look into it more deeply. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, should we come out of share screen so we can see everyone? Uh, and then let's open it up for further questions, if, if that's possible. Okay, questions, anyone? There's, there's, there's a lot there, a lot to explore, and I, I'm certainly looking forward to going back to those, uh, those slides. I thought it was stunning. But any, any questions, anyone? Hazel's got a hand up. Hazel. Yes, I can get my brain working. Um, complimentary all the way through. I can remember from childhood being the one said, oh, isn't that nice? Isn't that beautiful? Ah, uh, ah, uh, being the only one I'd like to have met you when you were young. Uh, <laughs> so much beauty around and unusualness, peculiar, peculiarities, and I'd take photographs. <laughs> and, but there's so much to see and nobody else seemed to notice it. <laughs> Oh, it was wonderful, Margaret. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you. That's great. I, I, I really liked your, um, when you had the Rothko uh, pictures alongside, and it's just this whole question as does art imitate nature or, or, or nature influence art? Uh, it, it's, it's fascinating to see what's on. And I do agree with you. I think um, some of those images would look stunning as a, a, as a large sort of photo on, 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 on a wall. And uh, uh, people might come in and immediately think it's some form of uh, uh, abstract or intricate art. Well, I, that one of the that one of the leeching on the rock face with the yeah. papers is absolutely stunning. Absolutely That's amazing. Stunning. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely. I wonder how many people on the boat trips actually noticed that as they went. I, I wonder. Well, there's so much to see on that. <laughs> You'll be looking for it in future, hopefully. Absolutely, Judith. Um, I, I studied geology um, as an adult. Um, oh, right. You know, I, I took O, o level, um, and and it was very interesting because I had seen a lot of these rocks because I'd travelled, and 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 I, I was, um, you know, I, I was amazed how the young people were not as interested, and, and they hadn't seen things. But now, when I, when I watched Margaret's, uh, I every time I was trying to work out how it had been formed, rather than looking at the um, well, not. I mean, I was still looking at the colours and everything, but I, I was, you know, I was chasing in my mind what I'd learnt about how, you know, how how it had been formed, and like those great big stones with the feldspar and and you know and the quartz and all those sort of things. And the whole thing was fascinating, Margaret. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, but it's a bit very interesting what you say, Judith, because in a way, your your specialist knowledge. Uh, could actually interrupt or detract from your appreciation uh, aesthetically or almost on an emotional level. Um, well, I think I think since I did it as an adult, I, I could take both aspects. You could I I switch. I you wasn't switch. looking at you know yeah. I wasn't looking at things in in a purely academic way. Yes. You know, so so I I think I appreciate I can appreciate both. At, you know, and I mean, I it, it, the, the parallel is rather looking like a, an oil painting, and then still looking at the painting, saying, "Well, I wonder what sort of oil paint that painter used." Mm. You know, what mm. uh, and 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 uh, you know, what's the construction of the frame or whatever, rather than just appreciating the uh, the image itself. Mm. Uh, but thank you for that comment. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh yes, iPhone yes. 078. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Can I say something? Yes, do, Sandy. Hello. <laughs> okay. Hello. Um, could you explain about the recording? Because I would like to see that again. 
I've got a little thing on my screen that's got a red dot by record. Yes. And uh, is it available for us to look at? Yes. Thank you for asking that because it's uh, it, it, it's really good. One of the advantages of, of uh, having a Zoom uh, presentation like that is you can just press the record button. And, and Ian, co-host today, very kindly has done that. Uh, including actually our conversation right now. Um, it does require a little bit of editing usually, and uh, Ian uniquely has got this uh, wonderful flair for, for doing that. Uh, but what we do is put it on our own uh, U3A YouTube site. We've got about 40 yeah. videos mm. there at the moment. Um, the link to it is actually in the newsletter. So you can, you can go on, or even it works if you just mm. simply Google uh, Exmouth U3A YouTube. Uh, we've got a couple of other hands uh, up. Morris. Yeah, uh, thanks very much indeed, Margaret. I really enjoyed that. Um, uh, we've Judith, you're talking about sort of, you were saying sort of about studying geology at a later age. Um, I took geology A level and that really stimulated my interest ever since. Um, but Margaret, you're looking at the rocks and saying how beautiful they are. I look at the rocks and say, wow, that looks really beautiful. And I wonder how it happened. I wonder mm. what it, you know, what caused it. Yeah. I yeah. think the boundary between the aesthetic and <laughs> the sort of human curiosity is very blurred. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look at a, a rock and say, wow, that's really beautiful. And I can look at a rock and say, wow, how did that happen? Why did that happen? What was it like to stand on that? beach of sandstone 400 million years ago yeah. um, <laughs> thank you margaret it's back to the Jew, back to the john Berger's uh, quote isn't it about how much you know <laughs> the link between seeing and knowing exactly the more, yeah. the more you know the more you inquire and yeah once once you're sensitized to, to asking yourselves those sorts of questions with, and you have been sensitized by your a level Yes, yes. <laughs> that's right. More, more and more. And I think what he'd say, does that actually affect your perception or not? Uh, <laughs> he's fa he's a fascinating writer, wasn't he? I mean, it's it, it, it quite intriguing what, what he said. Uh, Bay Leahy, you had your hand up earlier. I did, yes. I just wanted to add to, um, thank you very much, Margaret, really enjoyed it. I just wanted to add to sort of what comes first, you know, the science or the, you know, aesthetic appreciation. Because I had an experience um, starting with the art and going to the geology because I went to see Anthony Gormley's Field for the British Isles. Mm -hmm. And uh, if anyone ever gets a chance to see it, do go. It's absolutely lovely. It's really simple, just little, little sort of rounded shapes looking like a people, but lots and lots of them all mm -hmm. kind of looking up. And then the shades of the a stone, uh, you know, sort of like fade and get lighter and darker. But later I went to the um, Gower in South Wales and I saw almost exactly the same thing in the rocks there. So, <laughs> <laughs> How interesting. How interesting. So I, yeah. I actually um, I wrote to Anthony Gormley to tell him um, that I'd had this really nice experience, you oh, know, and I started looked at the rocks in a completely different way because of his sculpture and didn't expect to hear anything but I got a postcard back saying dear Bay keep gazing wow <laughs> excellent, excellent. Oh, that's really? wonderful. Again, it's a question of what you perceive and whether others perceive the same thing, of course. That's, uh, that's yeah. uh, fascinating. <laughs> Brian, you've had your hand up. Um, yeah, I wanted to say that, first of all, I, I really, really um, appreciated your talk this morning, Margaret, and that, that you're right. They're absolutely beautiful, those images, and subtle and sensitive in many cases, too. Um, I'm interested in your students' perception at the time who said to you, what folds? Because now I'm going to say something that links with your final comments this morning. And that is that about two and a half years ago, I went on that very, oh, not the same one as you, I doubt, um, but I went on that journey to Brixham and I went specifically to take photographs. And I've got, I've still got, um, most of the photographs that I took because um, I was very pleased with them and there's probably a hundred photographs there might be more even and do you know what I didn't I, I did take the rocks I did take photos of them 
but I didn't see those colours, which in a way shocks me <laughs> um, and shames me at the same time. But I think it, it is true, you see. I think probably I was looking for different things. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't actually see that. And mm -hmm. it goes back to your student. And it also goes back to Berger, who I'm ashamed again to say that when I was studying art, it was he was, you know, the best thing since sliced bread and enforced <laughs> reading. Not that it really had been enforced. So um, thank you very much. And I think, you know, I'm going to go on that trip again and take some <laughs> <laughs> and, and see what, because I, I have it, or I should also check my photographs because I have another perception issue that when I look at my photographs, I may well find that I did take photographs yes. of some other <laughs> And subsequently, I still yeah. haven't seen them. Uh, yeah, you're so busy taking the photographs, you yeah. just forgot to view what was there. Really. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and again, my, recollect, my recollection of those actual cut that one of the colour, the ochre colours, is that it's better seen on the way going westwards. Oh, I think right. you're coming the other way. I think it's sort of behind your shoulder. You know, you, it's it, the, the rock. I think in what place it's taking the wrong way to actually notice it. On the, on and there is right. another question because, of course, the light is always changing, yeah. the climate is always changing. So, I mean, there's a the same image at a different time of day or a different yeah, climate yeah. could, could, could yeah. again be completely different. So there's a whole world, even in that just that uh, that vantage point. Like our dogs, our dogs. You know, and, and I'm going to say there's a rock on there that looks like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. It's a side oh, profile. When you look through it, <laughs> you may see. I know what you mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. Thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, iPhone 078 has something to say. <laughs> Have an iPhone. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. This is a picture. It's not very clear. At the bottom is a picture of Anthony Gormley, but we can't quite see it. All and right. he's looking up at the roof of a cave. Right. And this is in a book that I bought when I went to his exhibition. Oh, right. Yes. And um, so he was interested, obviously, in all this kind of thing. Oh, he is. Oh, excellent. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> excellent. Any, uh, any other comments or questions? Oh, oh, here we are, yes, while we're sharing books, yes, it's... Uh... It's a, a, a sort of geological drawing. Oh, and, wow, yes. And interpretation. I've got lots of that sort of thing I've done, but... Oh, that's wonderful. Going from one, going from one to the other, yeah. Oh, that's marvellous. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's terrific. That really is. Um, uh, oh, yes, sorry, Shirley. Heather. We need to un unmute. Oh, uh, Heather, you're, you've got your hand up yeah, first, Heather. I did. Brian will have to go back because it, when it rains, it may be different. <laughs> <When it's, laughs> so so often things change when it rains. So we, uh, on your point, John, I was thinking it, it, it applies to so many things, the perception, doesn't it? If you see yeah. a building, if you put a heading to it and everybody yes. can look at the, I don't know, the monuments or the memorials or whatever, then they're eared in on that. But if they go just openly and yes. except you'd find out of 10 people they're all looking at it differently yes yes um, and yeah. it's so lovely to hear margaret um talking about because that's probably where i'm coming from and then the second question is how did that happen yes. you know and listening to judith and the yes. others that have done it then you actually found out how it happened but my first impression is aesthetically. So, yes, um, and, yeah. yes and that it sort of leads you on as curiosity. Yes, because I started off with the how did it happen with my research. That there, anyone ever goes to Godrevi Point in Cornwall? That's the that was the key area of my research. It's art solved, and I had to explain how that happened. And there were uh, three phases of folding, superimposed mm -hmm. one on another, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, yeah, it's very, it's impossible to avoid that question once you know a bit about it. Yes, you yes, go yes. into it more and more deeply. Yeah. But, but no, it's, it's, one, it's more just double, a... one more double page. Oh, yes, please. There's the, oh, lovely. There's the, and then there's the more, oh, there's the, uh, the, 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 and then it goes into more artistic interpretation. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm. Lovely. Mm. Really that's lovely. fantastic. Thank you. Right. So I, I coined the phrase aesthetic geology after, after the colleague's comment. And 
No. Um, and for Brian's interest, because Brian will know this person, it's Peter Howard. Do you remember Peter Howard? Oh, yes. Oh, you know yeah. him as well. He made a comment, yeah. Yes. Um, in my interest was aesthetic rather than scientific, but <laughs> it's that yeah. it started with the science. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wonderful. Shirley, you, you had your hand up a bit earlier. Um, well, thank just thank you for the talk. That was brilliant and really beautiful, beautifully done. Um, I just wondered whether amongst your photographs, do you actually select any to put on your wall? <laughs> yes. Do you have favourites? No, I tend to put them in, as I've just shown you, my journal. I don't put them yes. no. But the paintings I've got on the wall, looking down now, are actually of all of Cornwall, and well, they're not quite all of Cornwall, and they're mine. I'm just going around them. They're miners' cottages and landscape by a chap with the, a chap called John Piper, not the John Piper, oh. but a modern John Piper who paints in uh, based in Newlyn. Um, yes, I just think that um, we don't use photography as much as we do painting to decorate no. our houses. And, and I've got a very beautiful photograph that one of our sons took. And um, every time, and I mounted that and put it on the wall. And every time people come to the house, they notice that. And I just think that we don't actually use photography enough as an, <laughs> as an art form. I, I, I think you're actually right. right. I, I think there's enormous potential to use that more. And particularly when we've seen the sort of images that yes. Mark has shared with us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Brian. Um, well, in a way, it's to carry on from that because um, obviously many of Margaret's photographs were on a massive scale, and most noticeably, some of them taken from the um, aeroplane that she was in, and those beautiful ones of the waterways and feathery things like leaves and things. Um, but yeah, I suspect that most of us have walked along Budley many times and <laughs> gone past that very same cliff that there was two or three beautiful photographs. And the point I'm gonna make is that, and it is, it's a photographic issue as well as an artist when they decide to draw something or paint something is what you select. And I do wonder if when we walk along Budley, we do miss some of the beauty because it's on such a large scale. It's almost mm -hmm. like overwhelmingly mm -hmm. visual. Mm -hmm. And Margaret, by selecting it down, I'm not mm -hmm. taking away from the beauty mm -hmm. of it at all, but what she has shown us today is a selection where she has actually mm -hmm. yeah. zoned in on a, an aspect of it. Yes. And yes. that's another yes. thing to do with yes. why we see things differently as well. And, and, and that in itself, in effect, selecting the, the frame as it were, <laughs> That itself is it takes uh, talent, doesn't it, to uh, uh, to, to just uh, to just to that. Um, oh, Marjorie's got a hand up, Marjorie. Yeah, um, well, I just want to say that many, many, many years when I first went to Bude and saw the rocks there, the cliffs, and that, I was absolutely amazed. And I was very surprised. I took loads of photographs, and I was very surprised when I spoke to people who lived there or visitors who hadn't even noticed. Now, yeah. how can you not notice? <laughs> yeah. Tell me that. And, and sort of said, why are you taking pictures of that? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I thought it was beautiful. And I'm so pleased you included it in the talk. I was hoping you would. And I found it fascinating. And I could put a lot of those pictures on my wall. Yeah. 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 It's definitely art as well. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Any uh, any other points, anyone? Well, that hour has flown by. Thank you, Margaret. That uh, and we could keep going on and on, couldn't we? Really, we we tend for those of you new, we tend to to stop after an hour. People usually have to go or have the commitments, mm -hmm. uh, but we do stay on for a few minutes after if anyone wants a, a general chat. But uh, Christine, can I can I hand over to you? <laughs> Yes, thank you so much, Margaret, for your enthusiasm and for your ability to notice so much, both from a structural geology point of view, but also as an artist as well. And you've got talents in the structural geology as well as in your art. And I think it's excellent that you're keeping a journal because that's a wonderful way of recording what you've seen and that will be lovely for your family to keep as well. I think that's absolutely glorious. 
Um, I think you're a superb advert for our U3A geology group because sometimes when people come along to the geology group as a new member, they say, oh, I don't know anything, I don't know anything. And I said, well, don't worry, nor do I. Um, but we've got such a variety of people in the U3A geology group. We've got people with PhDs, people who've taught geology, people who've lectured um, at a high level in geology. And then we've got other people who are just enthusiastic about the patterns and the colors and looking, but can't necessarily remember what the rocks are called or how they were formed or anything. But we can always go and ask some of the members who do know. Margaret, of course, is one of the people we can ask. <laughs> Um, but Margaret's helped to see it from a different perspective, which I think is good. And we're very fortunate to have our Stuart Line cruises here, aren't we? Because Absolutely. the geology cruise is always brilliant. Um, yes, I did remember those people uh, on those rocks because we watched them jumping in, which was fascinating. <laughs> and, and there's always so much to see on that. And you've shown us that today and through your aerial photography as well. Margaret, which was wonderful, just looking at the beautiful pat patterns and the cliffs and the folds, and also how um, animals and insects have um, helped create some of the things that we see as well. Um, and you've introduced us to some of the sculptures that maybe we didn't know about um, in Salisbury as well. And definitely I could recommend the Exeter University Sculpture Trail. Perhaps best to do it in the summer when the cafes are open, but um, it's definitely <laughs> worth it. Um, you can get there easily by bus, two buses from here, but um, it's definitely worth it. So thank you very much, Margaret. Absolutely superb and excellent uh, talk and presentation and really colourful and exciting. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for the discussion. I, I, I found it really interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's wonderful. Thank, thanks once again, uh, Margaret. And as I say, we uh, aim to get the recording up uh, probably in the next few days or so, uh, and we'll put the link in next uh, next newsletter.